Hey fellow fishing fanatics, Ben Eckwood Lee here, I'm a passionate angler and today I'm back with another launch to long hook video. This time I'll be heading out on a small southern Wisconsin reservoir in search of some pre-spawn largemouth and smallmouth bass and in search of revenge because the past three times I've gone fishing I've gotten skunked and that needs to change so today vengeance is due. Let's see if we can make it happen. So my launch to Lunker video series is where I head out on the water in search of a given species of fish and I peel back the curtains on everything I'm doing in my effort to get hooked up. So from preparation to hitting the water, finding the spot, matching the lure to the situation, and adapting to the changing conditions, and hopefully putting a bunch of fish in the boat, you see my entire process start to finish, no camera trickery, I'm rolling the film, hitting the water, and revealing it all so you can learn from my mistakes and from my triumphs and just have a good time watching the video. And today I'm going to be chasing some pre-spawn bass on a little reservoir, and the reason I like fishing on a small reservoir, despite the fact that it doesn't have a great population of fish, is it offers something very different. You know, here in southern Wisconsin, a lot of our lakes are very similar. There are these deep, clear lakes with a basin in the middle, a shallow flat around the edge, a weed line, and some good docks. And that's okay, but it doesn't really offer a lot of different opportunities for different kinds of techniques. And that's why I've enjoyed fishing this reservoir, is because it has muddy water, it has laid down trees, it just has a different kind of fishing. And that makes it a really exciting fishery, and I've enjoyed going there a lot. And I want to start by talking a little about the preparation I'm doing when I head out fishing. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is analyzing what calendar period that fishery is going to be in. And what a calendar period is pretty much a time of year when the fish are behaving a certain way, usually correlated to water temperature. And it was invented by Alan Ron Lindner back in the 1970s, and they're two of the best anglers ever. They work for in fishermen, but I use that technique every day. It's really the basis toward understanding fish behavior and movement, which is critical to any fishing. Once I've analyzed the calendar period, then I'm going to try to think about what different habitat options the fish in the water body I'm visiting have to use during that calendar period. And in this water body, a lot of those fish are going to be moving upstream because it's a reservoir. I can really zero in on the fish pretty quickly by fishing a few different locations. And so for starters, I'll probably be fishing the more upstream ends, steeper riprap banks, uh, maybe with some laydowns. And the reason is because in that winter time period when the water level is lower, that's when those fish are using the downstream laydowns in deep water. But then as the water level rises and they move more upstream, they're going to be shallower. And especially when the water level is rising, those fish are going to push right up to the bank. Although while the water level is high right now, it was even higher earlier and it dropped a little. So I don't know where the fish are actually going to be, but we're going to try to figure it out. But part of what makes today different is I'm actually doing another video right now where I build a topwater walking style stick bait out of a stick. And so I hope you watch that video too, but I'm going to be fishing this stick, stick bait a lot today and trying to make that video happen as well while I'm filming this video too. So that's one day I'm going to be throwing this stick bait. It's actually only mid-April of 2024, but nevertheless, it's a really warm day. It's actually almost 80 today, if not 80. So it's a really warm day. We've got a warm front. We've got clear skies and it's fairly calm. So I'm thinking this walking bait not only will be a fun choice, but also a good choice. Other than that, I'll likely be throwing a square book, crank bait, and then a a shaky head style worm. So we're gonna see if we can catch some fish and the weather, because we do have the sunny skies, I'm gonna be fishing in the evening. But other than that, because we're having a warm front, the fish should be biting. So it should be a fun day. Let's make it happen. Let's go. Dang, that, I think that was a fish. I can't be certain, but look at, yeah, I think that was a fish. All right, folks, so we just got out to this reservoir here in southern Wisconsin, and the crazy thing is the water temperature is actually 63.7 out here in the main reservoir. And my guess is that while that's definitely warm enough for the fish to be spawning, they are not going to be up on beds because I'm taking this temperature at almost six in the afternoon, and that means that the water has probably warmed up today. And seeing that it was actually like 81 today, it's probably reading a lot warmer than it actually is when you get down a foot or two in the water. So this is probably not a very accurate water temperature and probably the fish are not up on beds yet. It'll probably take several days or even weeks of that water temperature to really key the fish into the bed. Also, it's April. It's early April, early to mid-April, and in a few days it's actually going to be only 58 out. The high is only going to be 58. So my guess is the fish are not on beds. It's just that the water temperature is reading warmer because the transducer that's taking the water temperature is in the top few inches and I'm taking the temperature in the afternoon after the surface has had time to warm up. So we may see some fish like cruising shallow, getting ready to make beds. My guess is that would be no. I'm gonna start by fishing the walking bait along this bank, which is just pretty much a rocky gravel bank with some lay down trees and deep water nearby. And it's in the more upstream section of this lake. So hopefully those fish are moving upstream and 
feeding along this rocky bank. The water level has dropped significantly since I was last here, but last time I was here was a flood, so really we have no way of telling, but yeah, we're gonna get our lines in the water, hopefully get hooked up, stay tuned. All right, folks, so like I mentioned, I'm gonna be fishing this walking bait that I made homemade, and this is gonna be in another video where I actually show you how I made this walking bait out of a stick. And unfortunately, as I was making it, the rear eye of the walking bait pulled out. So I'm just tying this rear feathered treble to the other eye with 12 pound fluorocarbon and stuffing it in there. So probably not gonna work great. That's on a liter of 12 pound test, Berkeley XL Tri-Lean Monofilament. And I'm using that mono leader to keep the nose up. The main line's Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8. And then the rod is a seven foot one, medium heavy power, fast action St. Croix Bass X. And the reel is a 13 fishing Inception. So I'm gonna be casting this thing around we're gonna make our first cast and see how it works in the water and hopefully catch some fish. All right, first cast is the homemade walking bait. Cast well, did it work well? Oh dang, it doesn't have a time. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, guys. Nice top water walk the dog action. That is like dreamy good action. I feel like we're gonna catch a fish. Well, folks, they aren't crushing that top water, so I'm gonna switch it up to a Rapala BX Brat square bill. And I've had a lot of success on this one in the past at this reservoir. And based on the situations we're finding ourselves in with that muddy water, rip wrap, wood, should work pretty well. I'm thinking it might just be too early for that top water, but stay tuned for that top water video anyways. It will be coming out as soon as I can get bit on that top water. So we're gonna crank this Rapala BX Brat, and I'm gonna be throwing it on that same reel and line, but the rod is just an old junky fiberglass quantum which i actually really like it's only six feet but it works well because it has that medium action as opposed to fast action which really lets the rod bend for the full length of the rod to prevent fish from tearing out of the hooks when i'm fighting them if you want to see a whole video i did on understanding rod action and power and length and all that terminology i'll leave a link to that video i made right up here or up here or down in the description somewhere so yeah now let's get to fishing the square bill well folks, after I fished the crankbait for a good amount of time, I still wasn't getting bit, so I decided to switch it up to a shaky head worm. A 4 inch zoom finesse worm on a 16th ounce Bass Pro Shops EWG Ned Rig head, and then that was rigged up on 6 or 8 pound test suffix advanced fluorocarbon leader material with a mainline of 8 pound test Berkeley Fireline Ultra 8. The rod was a Shimano Convergent 6 foot 6 spinning rod, fast action, moderate light power. The reel was a Daiwa Eliminator 2500 size, and here is what happened. That's fish. That's fish. That's fish. That's fish. It's a good bass. Get up in the boat. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's not a big bass by any standards. It's a little guy. But it is a fish. Oh, sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Give him a weigh it on this Rapala scale. 1.50. A half pounder. Well, folks. Not a big one by any standards, but at least we got a fish. Thank you for letting me catch you, beautiful fish. Bye bye. Well, folks, obviously I call them launch to Lunker videos, but that one did not have the Lunker part of the equation. After fishing an hour and a half, I'd only caught one small foot long smallmouth bass. But you know, an hour and a half is not a very long time to be out there, and besides, that lake is not known to have a very good population of bass at all, so I'm not too disappointed. But you might be wondering, why did I choose to publish a video where I really don't catch many fish at all? But the answer is kind of twofold. You know, first of all, I think it's important to be honest. That's one of my core channel values. I think too many channels out there only show you when they actually crush fish, and I don't feel like that's most anglers. Me, personally, during the pre-spawn, it's kind of feast or famine. I rarely catch a lot of fish. Most of the time, I'm getting skunked, probably, honestly, maybe 50, 60 times percent of the time I'm getting skunked and when I do catch fish I usually catch them pretty good but even during the summer when I maybe I'm only getting skunked eight or nine or ten percent of the time even when I do catch fish I might only be catching four or five and now I don't go out for nine or ten hours like the pros I'm only out for maybe five or six hours but still I'm not really the best angler ever I do want to be honest I'm just on a journey and documenting that fishing journey as I go along and then the other reason is I think you can learn from my mistakes, you know, you can't make all the mistakes yourself, so that's the other thing. 
The mistakes I made today are, first of all, I really didn't keep a very open mind. You know, I had caught fish on that reservoir in the fairly recent past, but you know, the water conditions had changed dramatically since I'd last been successful there. I mean, the water temperature was up 12 degrees, which is, which is very impressive. I mean, the fish could have been on beds. I don't think they were, because once again, I was taking the temperature in the afternoon. It was probably just the surface layer that was warming up. But, yeah, that was the first mistake I made. I really locked into that, that location way too much, and... To my credit, that fishery really does not have a lot of different spots you can go to. Uh, so, I mean, I didn't have a ton of options, but I kind of did lock myself into that pattern, which obviously did not produce. The other thing I did is I did not stick with that walking bait for long enough. I think I kind of did the worst possible thing. If I hadn't gotten bit on it in the first 10 casts, I should have switched it up, or I should have just locked myself into it and dedicated my entire time to it and really dedicated myself to that pattern, but I kind of didn't either. I really didn't go to finesse soon enough, I'd say. But yeah, hopefully you can learn from that stuff. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and comment. A comment would make my day. I love, I love receiving comments. And next time you have a chance, go out fishing and catch some fish. Thanks for watching.